Hello, everyone. My name is Megan Taylor, as Jessica said. Um, we are going to just present a little uh, PowerPoint for you. So let me pull that up just to highlight some of our work that we've been doing with the our committee thus far. All right. So with our committee, the core of our membership is um, eight members. We have three representatives here today, Marianne, Rebecca, and then um, Chaba will be joining us shortly. As a committee, we really value your input as the Clarinet community and look to hosting open meetings for you this year. We're hoping to have the first one um, sometime in February, so be on the lookout for when that will be scheduled. And our mission as a committee is um, to sustain a dialogue with the ICA membership year round to educate clarinetists about health and wellness topics with the goal of cultivating a healthier clarinet community. We'll go ahead and get started with panelists introductions. Marianne, if you don't mind starting. Yeah, I don't mind at all. Thanks so much. Um, I'm Marianne Brenneman. I have degrees in clarinet from Michigan State University, Wayne State University, and the University of Cincinnati College Conservatory of Music. Uh, I am a master certified health coach and meditation and mindfulness instructor and practitioner. I'm the owner of Mindful Health and Harmony, which is an empowerment coaching practice in Raleigh, North Carolina. I have always been health conscious, um, but I started to realize that the life I was leading as a musician wasn't always the best for me emotionally or physically. And I started to make some changes in my own life. And then I became passionate about sharing these things with my colleagues and my students so that they could feel calmer, more connected, more physically well, which allows them to enjoy the music making that they're, that they're doing and that they love so much. So as I said, I live in Raleigh, North Carolina. I have uh, two beautiful golden retrievers and a husband named Brian, who is a trumpet player. Great, thank you, Marianne. My name is Rebecca Rishan. I'm the professor of clarinet at Ohio University. I've been there since 1995. I don't have any pets, unfortunately. Um, I studied in Paris for two years before this and had a lot of fun. Um, you may know me from my book, For the End of Time, the Story of the Messian Quartet, but I'm primar primarily a clarinet performer and teacher and I've performed all over the world, including Carnegie Hall. Um, I first got interested in health and wellness through an unfortunate experience of my own. I'll tell you about it a bit later. It wasn't actually due to playing the clarinet, it was due to excessive typing. And um, so I developed an upper extremity injury. And so through my own unfortunate experience and that of some of my students, I became somewhat of an expert on the prevention and treatment of upper extremity overuse injuries. And I'm looking forward to sharing with you what I've learned a little bit later. Thanks. Thank you both so much. So we're gonna get into um, a few of the initiatives we have upcoming. We have two main um, channels for disseminating information to you that we're starting, um, a digital resource um, archive, and then a social media campaign that we're hoping to run a little bit later. We're going to start talking about um, the digital resources we have developed, um, or we're planning to develop this semester. Um, Rebecca, if you don't mind sharing a little bit about the health topic pages. Sure, yeah, there's going to be um, a specialized page on the ICA website devoted to health and wellness, and it's going to address a variety of issues, um, physical and mental, so overuse injuries, diet lifestyle, mental health, you know, emotional well-being, um, physical well-being, so kind of a, a broad spectrum of health issues will be available on the ICA website soon. And then the resource list that we're hoping to develop, Marianne. Yeah, of course. Um, thanks so much. So the committee is really hoping to provide resources for clarinetists who are looking to improve their health and wellness. Uh, this committee has been formulated of, of members with a broad knowledge um, in different diverse topics, including yoga, body mapping, meditation, and mindfulness nutrition, diet, and lifestyle, music performance anxiety, which I know is so important to all of us, exercise and fitness, musicians' health research, uh, injury prevention, 
Feldenkrais, Alexander Technique, Autoimmune Disorders, and Chronic Illness. So we have a lot of, of uh, experience on this committee, but we are also interested in hearing from ICA members who are working in the wellness industry. So please be sure to let us know who you are and what you do. Uh, as we all know, collaboration is key and we would love to connect. There will be a call for submissions in the near future and the list that we build will be comprehensive, including outside re resources beyond just our clarinet community. And then the last thing we're going to develop is a feedback form um, just for the membership to provide feedback about our work and then also to share their own health and wellness experiences and to ask questions for us to consider um, for future resources. We're doing this to hopefully gather some insights into what our membership um, really wants to know about in regards to health and wellness so that we can build resources that are made specifically to target those areas. And then the final thing, um, the other kind of vein we're going with is a social media campaign. And our first one is going to be a how to thrive during clarinet fest. We're really hoping to provide information about how to get the most out of the conference while being mindful of your health. So that'll come out hopefully a few weeks before the, um, the conference this summer. So be on the lookout for that. And that brings us to the end of this portion of our talk. Let me get the PowerPoint out of the way. And then we're going to move into our discussion section. So during this part of the webinar, um, we have topics prepared by Marianne and Rebecca, and then we'll do a little um, Q&A after each one of them. But at any point, if you have questions about health and wellness topics as they come up, please just put them in the chat and Rebecca and um, Mary Ann, sorry, Rebecca and Jenny will kind of relay those to Mary Ann, Rebecca and I, so that we can answer them for you. But we'll let uh, Mary Ann start off the discussion. Okay, well, I thought it would be a nice way to start this early morning. It's early, not all that early for me, but I know it's early for some of you with a meditation and mindfulness practice, but let's talk about meditation and mindfulness first. So. Um, they are often lumped together, and while they complement each other, they're not exactly the same. So some people use them interchangeably, but they are not really the same thing, but they can't exist without each other. So meditation is the act of slowing down, focusing on something. You often see people sitting in a chair with their eyes closed and their hands held together in a, in a mudra, as we call them. Uh, you can focus on your breath. You can focus on a sound in the room, a repeated affirmation or mantra. It really is just the opportunity to sit and concentrate on one thing at that exact moment, which we don't often take the time to do. Meditation is an ongoing practice. It's a skill that gets developed. We do it to be calmer and more focused, um, more relaxed. And one thing I really want to stress, we don't do it to get good at it. Um, and that's hard for us musicians because we do things to get good at it, right? So we are not doing meditation to become good at it. And that's really super important to remember because that adds stress and that's not why we do it. So some days your meditation is gonna be focused and easy and it'll feel really good. And then other days you'll sit down to practice and it'll be like you had eight cups of coffee and the circus is running through your head and there's nothing you can do about it. And the whole point is that with the consistent practice, you'll learn to tune out the noise. And that's what we're aiming for. We're aiming to just be able to tune out noise on command. So there are several different ways that you can meditate. You can do one. You can try a bunch of different ones. You need to find a couple that work for you or just one that works for you. It's up to you and there's no right or wrong. And that's a really refreshing, really refreshing thing. So mindfulness, on the other hand, is the ability to be present in the moment, doing exactly one thing at a time, you're fully engaged in what you're doing. Some of us have had that moment when you're in a performance and it's almost as if you're not even there. It's you're transcended into another place. And that's fantastic. It would be great if that happened all the time. It doesn't, but it, we know it when it happens. So that's kind of what we're shooting for, that one single minded focus. This is the exact opposite of multitasking, which we have all been sadly taught to do. You know, we live in a time where we answer texts, we read emails, we make our grocery list all at the exact same moment and our heads swirl with thoughts and the thoughts own us instead of the other way around. So I've learned and it's taken a long time, but I've learned that when we can learn to slow down and monotask instead of multitask and really pay attention to what we're doing, we're better at what we do and we enjoy it more, which I think is really the key. So as I said before, you can't really separate meditation from mindfulness. They're the perfect complement to one another. So what I'd like to do now is I'd actually like to have us do a, a small, short meditation practice. Um, 
We'll do that in just a second, but if you're going to do this on your own, additionally, some other time, I suggest guidance from an app like Calm or Headspace. Uh, a guided meditation is a wonderful way to get started where you don't have to figure it out. You don't have to be the expert. You don't have to design your practice. Someone just leads you through it. Um, you can also use your phone or your watch to do simple breathing um, exercises or positive affirmations. The key is don't beat yourself up when your mind wanders because it will. It just will. And all you do is you gently guide yourself back to your breath or your mantra or whatever so that you can just focus on that. So, so let's do a short guided meditation based on positive statements. Um, I can't see any of you other than the committee people, which is great, but I would suggest if you can see everybody else that you turn your camera off while we do this. I find that when I lead Zoom meditations, if the cameras are off, you're able to relax a little bit more. You're not feeling like you're being watched. So let's take a second to do that, and I will do that myself. I invite you to sit comfortably either in your chair or on the floor. You'll sit tall but not stiff, and you'll sit alert but relaxed. Roll your shoulders back and place your hands on your thighs. Your palms may face up or down, whatever is most comfortable to you. Allow your eyes to fall gently closed. Take a deep breath in through your nose and then release, release it through your mouth like a sigh. Let's take another deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth and on the exhale, relax into your chair, feel your, your bottom supported by the chair or the floor. Allow yourself to feel grounded and supported. Relax your shoulders, which is so hard for all of us and release your tongue from the roof of your mouth. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. Repeat silently to yourself the statements that I'll make as you continue your breath. You may either exhale through your nose or your mouth, whatever serves you best today. A meditation practice is about you and not about anybody else. I start my day with ease and grace. Breathe in and breathe out. I have nowhere to be but here at this very moment. Breathe in, breathe out. My body is rested and my mind is clear. Breathe in and breathe out. I feel the air coming in through my nose and circulating through my healthy body. Breathe in, breathe out. It's okay to take this time for myself and for my wellness. Breathe in, breathe out. It's okay if my mind is wandering, I am not perfect. I bring my attention back to my breath with no judgment. Breathe in, breathe out. I am among a supportive community and I am safe here. Breathe in, breathe out. I am among people who love the clarinet like I do and love to learn about how to improve themselves and their community. Breathe in and breathe out. I am healthy, well, and vibrant. Breathe in and breathe out. 
I am a creative force. Breathe in. Breathe out. I am a positive influence on the world. Breathe in. Breathe out. I see the good in everyone. Breathe in. Breathe out. I am safe. I am enough. And all is well. Breathe that in. And breathe out. I send love and compassion to all people on this call and all people in the world. Breathe in. Breathe out. All is well. Breathe in. And breathe out. Allow your breathing at this point to return to normal while still feeling the air coming in your nostrils, filling your chest and your abdomen, feeling them gently rise and gently fall. Let's take a few cycles of breath here as you need. If you notice any tension in any parts of your body, your neck, your shoulders, your throat, sometimes your face, um, send your breath to those parts of your body. Consciously relax them. You can bring your attention back to your room, wiggle your fingers and your toes, maybe roll your neck. And when you're ready, feel free to open your eyes to the room and turn your cameras back on. How does everybody feel? Thank you so much for that, Marianne. That was oh, wonderful. sure, sure. Um, I love doing that. It's it's fun because um, even though I'm leading it, I still get to do it myself, and so it's amazing. I started out a little a little stiff up here, and you can almost feel everything go down. So, I hope everyone's feeling a little bit more focused. Um, are there any questions that anyone would like to ask? I'm happy to discuss my own practice or or answer questions. I'm looking at the chat. I see somebody using breathe. Oh yeah, that's that's great. Yeah, and, and yes, I'd be happy to make those affirmations available. Um, it's it's really fun to make up your own, depending on where you are in your life and what's going on in your life. Um, some of us are old enough to remember Stuart Smalley from Saturday Night Live, and some of you are probably not. But you know, it, we all laughed at him standing in front of his mirror and saying, you know, I'm good enough and I'm smart enough and doggone it people like me and um, it, we all made fun of it, but it's so true. It's, it's really important to put yourself um, in the right frame of mind to have a good day, to be a positive influence, to accomplish what you want, and most importantly, not to beat yourself up. Oh good, I'm glad Jessica remembers. <laughs> um, yeah, to, to not beat yourself up about um, neg with negative self-talk. We all have that, particularly as musicians, because we are under so much pressure to be good at what we do, which is why I stress that you can't worry about being good at meditation. Some days are good, some days are not. And uh, the minute you can learn to release that self-talk and understand that we're all just doing the best we can do at any given moment in any given circumstance, your life will improve and your, your joy from your music will improve. And that's what I wish that I had learned earlier in my career. Um, I carried a book called Breath Sweeps Mind around in my gig bag for three years at CCM and never cracked it. <laughs> People said, oh, did you do you meditate? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I should, but I didn't. And then it took me years to get to the point where I was like, I love, I love music. Why am I not enjoying it more? And once I realized that I could enjoy it more, there's, there's no turning back. And that's when I decided I wanted to help other people understand that too. So if anyone has any questions of me, um, you can certainly email me. I'll put my email in the um, 
in the chat and I'll put my website in the chat, which is down for maintenance at the moment, but it will be back up soon. So. Excellent. Well, um, we'll give it a minute here if there's any questions. And then when Rebecca, if you're ready to present um, on uh, your topic, that would be excellent. Sure. Thank you so much for that meditation, Marianne. That was great. Well, should I go ahead? Okay. Um, well, I'm honored and happy to be here today to talk to you a little bit about um, overuse injuries to the upper extremities. As I told you, I kind of become became an expert on this through my own misfortune. Um, in the summer of 2010, I was ferociously typing a promotion to full professor dossier at Ohio University. And I got the promotion, but in the process of typing the 100 page document, I developed tendonitis in both arms. And unfortunately the pain and disability lasted for several months. And so I searched for treatment from every possible source. I sought physical therapy, I got cortisone shots, I got acupuncture, I got PRP injections, I, I purchased ergonomic computer accessories and kitchen tools, because believe it or not, cooking, all that chopping and stirring can aggravate overuse injuries. Um, I even changed my diet. In physical therapy, I learned the importance of stretching and strengthening, um, massage, ultrasound, magnet therapy, um, icing, using biofreezer, icy hot really helped with the pain. Um, I also sought um, the advice of a specialist, Dr. Robert Markison, who, who founded the Clinic for the Health of Performing Artists at the University of California in San Francisco, which is one of the premier hospitals in the United States. I was fortunate to be able to go there because I'm a native of San Francisco. He's actually a hand surgeon. But miraculously, he's a, a very accomplished clarinetist as well. Um, and so he knew all about overuse injuries. He prescribed a gluten-free diet for me because tendonitis is actually a, an inflammation of the tendons and gluten is an inflammatory agent. So um, that's why he was in favor of that. He also recommended taking vitamin D and coenzyme Q10, I knew nothing about these. He also recommended having my TSH levels tested. TSH is your thyroid hormone. If that goes out of whack, the muscles and tendons don't function at their best. Um, one really important thing that he recommended since my injury was due to typing, he recommended that I get voice activated software for my computer. It's called Dragon Dictate and they make it for both Mac and PC, but most Macs, PCs, iPhones, iPads, etc., all have a dictation function you can use. And that has been and was life-saving for me so that I didn't have to type the dictation functions are free, drag and dictate. I don't recall how much it costs, but I think it's a little under $200. But if you have a really up-to-date computer, your dictation function should work really well. Um, you can also get an ergonomic mouse or keyboard, and that helps a lot. Um, I did get cortisone shots just because I had important concerts and recordings coming up and I didn't want to have to cancel them, but I would not recommend them unless it's a last resort. And as I said, if you have something coming up, you can't cancel because cortisone shots tend to weaken the tendons and the surrounding tissue. And some people think that you should only get them no more than three times in the same spot in a lifetime due to this. The other problem is they only last about three months. So if your problem is chronic, you're going to have to get multiple cortisone shots, which is dangerous. One alternative to that is PRP injections. That stands for platelet-rich 
platelet-rich plasma injections. And this is um, when the doctor takes your blood and then extracts the platelets with this machine and then injects those platelets back into you. And what it does is it expedites the healing process. And I did do that because I didn't want to do too much cortisone, but the drawback is that insurance doesn't cover it and it's very expensive. Each shot is like $485. So if you need several shots, it can really add up. Um, in my teaching, I found that some of my students developed right arm pain. And so, as I'm sure many of you know, using a neck strap can really help or using a unique thumb rest from a manufacturer such as Kumin or some of the others. Um, we're fortunate at Ohio University to have a clinic specialized um, for the health of performing artists. And it's basically like free physical therapy, which is great for our students. Anyone in music, dance, theater, any of the arts can go to this clinic and get free physical therapy, which is really amazing because normally, you know, you have to pay for that at least $25 copay per appointment. Um, some of my students have had carpal tunnel. That's never happened to me, but I think prevention is very important because carpal tunnel, when serious, can even require surgery. And of course, surgery is serious and you never wanna have to do that. Um, of course, it's important to prevent these things. I've been talking about treatment, but prevention is the, the, the most important thing because you don't wanna get any of these overuse injuries. One thing I recommend in addition to stretching like this, stretching your fingers, stretching your forearms, is before you start practicing or typing, running your arms under warm water to get the blood flowing. This is very important um, because you don't wanna practice or type when your muscles are cold. Another thing you can do is wear fingerless gloves when you practice. If you don't wanna buy them online, you can just cut off the tips of cheap wool gloves and use those. It's kind of similar to dancers who wear leg warmers when they rehearse. You don't wanna exercise the fingers when they're cold. Um, warming up slowly and not starting immediately with fast practice is really important and alternating slow practice with fast practice. Um, I always tell my students to record themselves as much as possible, not only to hear your mistakes, but to hear the things that you don't need to practice because a lot of times we over practice things we don't need to practice and a recording doesn't lie. You know, a recording will tell you exactly what you need to do, but it will also tell you what you don't need to do. So recording is also very helpful in preventing overuse injuries. Um, I'm on a gluten-free diet. I realize it's difficult to follow. At first it was torture for me, no cake, no cookies, no pasta, you know, but then I got used to it and I, I have found that it has helped, um, but I realize it's hard to stick to a gluten-free diet, especially when you're traveling. Um, I'm a big fan of physical therapy, massage, ultrasound, magnet therapy. Strengthening is very important because injuries usually happen because the muscles are weak. So it's important to use weights, use putty for the fingers, use finger grip gadgets, you know, to strengthen the arms and the fingers because if your muscles are stronger, you're gonna be less likely to get injured. You can take anti-inflammatory medications such as Advil and a doctor can prescribe something more powerful. Um, I like using a topical gel called Voltaren. It comes in a generic that's inexpensive because I find that more effective than taking something orally. Um, I also find staying in shape physically is very important. Um, I exercise regularly. 
Um, but keep in mind that any form of exercise is not risk-free. You can injure your knees, your back jogging. You can injure your shoulders swimming. You can injure your forearms playing tennis. You know, exercise has its pitfalls as well. So I really think as with everything in life, moderation is the key. And it's very important, whether you're playing the clarinet, whether you're typing, whether you're running or swimming, that you stop before you feel any twinge of pain. You, you never want to push yourself to the point of pain because then you'll get injured. Um, as I said, I've learned about this through my own unfortunate experience, but I'm, I'm glad I did because it's made me more knowledgeable about this very important subject that all musicians, not just clarinetists, have to deal with. Um, so I'm happy to take any questions if anyone has. I'll look here in the chat. Um, I can also put my email in the chat if you think of anything later and you want to email me, um, feel free. Um, I promise I'll get to it as soon as I can. Um, it's, um, you know, health is, is very important. And, you know, a musician's life is difficult enough, as Marianne was saying, you know, we all work so hard to get better. We're all striving for perfection in our playing. Um, and the pursuit of perfection, unfortunately, can cause injury. Um, someone asked what the topical gel was that I mentioned. Um, I'll put it in the chat. It's called Voltron Gel, and it is available as a generic um, with a really long name. So I preferred to put the prescription name because these generic names are just so wordy and complicated. Um, but I, I welcome more um, questions if anyone has any questions. As I said, you know, who would think that something as ordinary as typing could cause injury? But as I told you, it can, you know, and it's very hard to do any sort of job without typing. So I'm a big advocate of using that dictation function, whether you're using your computer, your iPad, or your phone, you know, it really makes a difference because typing is detrimental to one's health, definitely. So um, Alexander technique, yeah, is really helpful. That was one thing I neglected to say, sorry, yeah. I've had Alexander technique lessons too, and they're really helpful. Feldenkrais Alexander technique, just to become more aware of the body. Also video recording yourself, looking at your fingers can really help. You know, we've all been taught, keep your fingers close to the keys, but I think all of us would probably be surprised at how far away from the keys the fingers actually go and how much better our technique would be if we kept them even closer. So putting a video camera in a position so you can see your hand position is very helpful too. Um, yeah, Alexander Technique, arm, shoulder, neck issues. When I had this issue with tendonitis, the pain wasn't just in my arms, it was in my shoulders. And so that impacted my swimming. I'm an adv advocate of swimmer. Yes, absolutely. Rest is the most important thing. And musicians have difficulty resting. You know, we're also concerned with achieving perfection. We don't want to rest. We don't want to cancel that concert, but rest is probably the most important medicine, just not doing that activity that caused strain. Thank you, Marianne. Thanks, Jessica. Yeah, running. Um, there are all sorts of things you can injure yourself doing, but I agree that exercise is so important. Um, sleep is important. One thing that really helps with your exercise is alternating. For example, I do jog, but um, I don't do it every single day. I alternate. Some days I swim, some days I jog, some days I do that old Jane Fonda workout from the 80s. You know, I, I'm a fan of Jane Fonda, but um, 
it's very important that you vary your type of activity because repetitive motion, whether it's on the clarinet or on a computer keyboard or on your legs or your arms or whatever, repetitive motion is what causes these injuries. And that's why so many secretaries and administrative assistants have to go to the doctor for these injuries because they're doing so much repetitive typing. And athletes too, you know, um, a lot of the doctors I went to were sports medicine specialists. They were orthopedists, but sports is very similar to music because music, you know, you're an athlete when you play. It's the same thing. We're using our muscles. I'm not really knowledgeable about like embouchure injuries, like um, focal dystonia to the embouchure or TMJ, but I realize those are injuries too. Um, um, and there's all sorts of helpful stuff online about those types of injuries. And yes, it's true. You'll sleep better. Thank you, Marianne, if you meditate. Acupuncture is great too. Um, I, I sought treatment through acupuncture and that was very helpful. And insurance does cover that. So that's a, an added benefit. Thank you so much for sharing all of that, Rebecca. I mm -hmm. I find it so fascinating the the amount of like other things that we can do in our daily life that lead to having problems playing your instrument. When I was in college, I worked at the Papa John's in the cafeteria cutting pizzas with like a handheld pizza cutter and just having my wrist in this position for so long, it gave me problems playing my clarinet and conducting and a whole bunch of issues. So I've always found, found that fascinating. And one thing that I just wanted to mention about um, devices like using your cell phone and doing that repetitive scrolling motion can also be really um, detrimental to your hands, especially if you're doing it hours and hours every day. Um, and the research that my partner and I did a couple of years ago on clarinetists found that 90% of clarinetists have some kind of pain in their life and they spend like six hours on their technology every day in addition to playing the clarinet, which is just, it's a lot. So being mindful of all of the external things that you're doing that can impact the clarinet is really uh, fascinating. But I see, Marianne, if you want to share your experience with overuse injuries, that would be excellent. Yeah, certainly. Um, and Rebecca, that was wonderful information. Just fantastic. You hit so many great points on that. Um, when I was in my second year at CCM, my right hand got to the point where I couldn't hold the instrument anymore. And I was already using a neck strap. I couldn't hold a drinking glass. I couldn't, I couldn't turn a doorknob. Um, so I sought help from a doctor, a hand surgeon who immediately said, oh, it's fine. We'll just cut right here and snip here and do that. And I was like, we're not doing any of that until I figure something else out to do. And it was really interesting because I had a student whose dad was a doctor and he came to the house one day to, to bring his daughter and I was wearing a, a, a brace that the doctor had said, well, you know, until I do the surgery, you can just wear this brace. I was like, you're never doing the surgery, um, but I'll wear the brace. And the, and the guy came in and he said, what's going on? And I told him and he said, well, I don't know if you know this, but I'm, you know, I'm a medical doctor and MD, but I'm also studying acupuncture. I'm not licensed yet. But if you want to trade clarinet lessons for acupuncture sessions, we can do it. And I said, go ahead. I mean, he was a doctor, so it's not like there was anything bad that was going to come from it. Literally within three sessions, I was better. I could hold the instrument. I could turn the doorknob. It was fascinating. It doesn't hurt. Um, it's, you know, it, he didn't just, he doesn't just put the needles in the affected area because, you know, there's meridians and points in the body that... It's a whole Chinese medicine thing. I mean, it's fascinating, but literally three sessions in, I was significantly improved, like five sessions in, I was back to normal. But that's when I started incorporating the things that Rebecca mentioned, the, the warm water, the stretching, the taking breaks, the things that I hadn't really thought about because I was so bound and determined to get better. And I was under a lot of pressure to get things prepared to perform. So I highly recommend acupuncture. Um, I actually had that doctor come to one of my studio classes at CCM and lay me down on a table and demonstrate acupuncture because when you hear needles, people think, oh my gosh, I can't, I can't do that. These are not needles like, like COVID injection needles. These, you know, these are tiny bendable small needles that just, they just go into the surface of your skin and they stimulate the energy through the body. So I highly recommend finding a practitioner in your area. Um, 
I do it now for just general maintenance. I go about every six weeks and it balances me emotionally and physically. And I have not had another problem with my wrist. That being said, I take, I, I take precaution. You know, I'm careful about the overuse thing. I don't practice five hours a day anymore. I don't practice even two hours in a row anymore. You know, it's, um, you take the breaks, you take the rest, but I would highly recommend at least investigating acupuncture and some Eastern philosophy type treatments. Yeah, I, I had um, a TMJ issue and I got acupuncture on my jaw and oh my gosh, it was amazing how quickly it, it helped alleviate a lot of the, the tension. My, my right side was always a lot more tight. And so it was like literally pulling my jaw over this way. And then it, in one session, it really had a major effect. And I've had it a couple of times since then. And it's, it's so helpful, but I was really scared to get it the first time because it's like, you're putting needles in your face, but it's, it's really not like that at all. Um, but yeah, I would echo that sentiment to really encourage you if you're interested at all in trying it just to see what it's like to see if it helps you. Um, I do have a question kind of for both of you. Um, you've talked about seeing medical professionals and I know that that can be kind of um, challenging and scary, especially if you go somewhere and they're not hearing you or not understanding your context um, as a working musician. Can you speak to how you took the time to find someone who would listen or just your experience with that? I was very fortunate to find this amazing Dr. Markison, who's a, an amateur quite accomplished clarinetist in, in addition to being a hand surgeon. Um, he was recommended to me by a sports medicine doctor, but I realized that was in San Francisco where you have some premium medical facilities and not everywhere in the United States has that. I was just fortunate because I'm a native of San Francisco. So I visited my family frequently and could go there, but yeah. Um, I would seek out primarily an orthopedist because they specialize in problems of the muscles and the tendons and the joints. Um, if it, the problem is with your embouchure like TMJ, I would recommend seeing a dentist. Um, also, um, as Marianne was saying, acupuncture can really help a lot. Um, massage helps a lot. Um, and as I was saying, physical therapy, usually physical therapists have to be pretty well knowledgeable about all these injuries. So that would be my recommendation. I hope that helps. My recommendation would be that you clearly state what you do and, and, and what your needs are, because as Rebecca said, and, and I think Megan alluded to this, sometimes they don't hear you, you know, like that hand surgeon I went to, he knew one thing and that was cutting people's hands open and fixing them. And for somebody who doesn't have these fine motor repetitive things needed, like I did, that might be just fine. But for me, that clearly wasn't going to work. So when I realized he wasn't hearing me, I never saw him again. You know, and and um, and that's important. Like if, if your gut tells you that this is not the right person and they're not hearing you, then you walk away and find somebody else. Um, and that can that can be a little scary because we've all been taught that the doctor knows best. Well, you know your body best. You are the expert on your body and what you're feeling. So, you know, you can be very polite about it, but you can you can continue that search and you can always get a second opinion. Um, any doctor who is offended that you get a second opinion should not be the doctor that you work with. So that's something to remember. Um, there's also, and I know we'll talk further about this, the Performing Arts Medicine Association where, you know, they, they might be able to, I don't know, is there, Megan, you know that better than I do. Is there a list there? Um, do they have ways to find practitioners locally? Yeah, so if you're a member of the organization, which to be a member as a student, I think it's like $60 a year or something, it's not bad. Um, you can have access to a list. I think we have a question from Mike here. This might be a nice one to end on as we wrap up. Um, do you think there's a connection between overuse injuries and mental health slash wellness? Can anxiety, stress, et cetera, play a role? I'll jump in. Heck yeah, it can. <laughs> Yeah, it absolutely does. Um, there, everything we do is connected. Your everything within us is connected. So, if I'm feeling anxiety and I'm and I'm tense and stressed, and of course my muscles are more tense and stressed, which means I'm working harder than I have to. So yeah, physically for sure, but also the reverse. When you get an overuse injury, you start to stress over it. You start to get anxious about it. There's a stigma, particularly among string players. I found this really interesting. I learned this recently. 
they just don't want to tell anybody they're injured because, you know, they're worried that they won't get hired again. And I, maybe I'm just an open book, but, um, you know, I, if I'm, when I was hurt, I was like, sorry, I'm hurt. I can't do it. You know, but string players hide it for some reason because of the work. So yeah, there's, there's totally all of that. And I think because so many of us for good or for bad, we identify as clarinetists. It is, there's not separating, you know, there's no separation. We are clarinetists. We are musicians. It's also what we do, but it's who we are. And when you get an overuse injury that threatens your career, it doesn't just threaten your career, it threatens your identity. And that's very, very stressful. So I think it's super important to do all the, the physical things that keep us healthy and well for prevention, but to seek the right treatment, but also to figure out how to balance everything within us and to have other interests too. I mean, it, we're just, you know, have other things that you like to do. But yeah, I, I think there's definitely a connection. And I think we all need to be mindful of that and help each other help each other figure that out because we're all here to help each other home. Yeah, I think Marianne is absolutely right. We all have to seek out ways of relieving stress. And, you know, the meditation that she was talking about, mindfulness is very helpful. Um, I find that exercise is a big stress reliever. As I said, I'm a big fan of swimming. And, you know, I just find out thrashing out in the pool, everything just is so relaxing, you know, but obviously, you know, I can't do that every day or I would injure my shoulders. Um, so I alternate it with jogging or um, just something to get out all the heebie-jeebies. It's, it's very important. Um, I'm currently reading a book called Burnout, The Secret to Unlocking the Stress Cycle. I don't know if you've heard it, but it's a sister pair. One of them is a choral director and the other one is a mental health professional. And they wrote this book together about how um, we need to complete like the stress cycle in order for our body to release energy. And exercise is one of the main things that they talk about um, utilizing in that book to kind of have this energy flow out of you when you are feeling amped up or stressed instead of just holding on to it and never releasing it. And I find that you both kind of touched on that, but it's a really interesting concept to me. Um, I think that that is where we'll have to leave it. This was an excellent discussion. Thank you so much to Mary Ann and Rebecca for being here. Thanks to Jessica and Jenny for hosting us. Thank you everyone. It was a pleasure. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. And um, we will, um, if you guys have, any other questions for the panelists, please reach out to them via email. As they've suggested, um, you can find most of their emails on the website. If they're not there, I'll get them added as soon. As you know, the new website is has the committee information. So once we have their date for their next meeting, you'll be able to find that uh, uh, on the website and you can go to that meeting and help share in these discussions and help shape this um, these initiatives that they're working on. This is obviously very important for all of us. And I think that we kind of put this on the back burner pretty much all the time. So um, I hope that you enjoyed this panel. Please join us for more sessions. Um, check out the schedule on the website. The next session starts at 11 o'clock on YouTube and you can find the link on the website. So thank you so much to Megan, Marianne and Rebecca and we will see you again in just a few minutes. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Thank you.